I'm building on a whole lexicon of intuitive forms and work that I've already made recently. And then the concepts reappear in all different materials. And I like trying the same concepts in a variety of materials. It's about choosing a material, imagining a form, thinking about structure, thinking about strength, and then thinking about how it can materialize in a certain place. Okay. The sculptural work happens with a premeditated concept. I would say it's all rooted somehow in an interest in the three-dimensional world, but one part of my work seems to consistently go back to these transparent, latticed, often spherical kinds of forms that are very kind of basic in terms of their geometry, but very organic in terms of how they show how they were made. This is maybe my favorite one. I'm gonna blow this one up. For me, they're, they're like interesting visual models that are at once three-dimensional and two-dimensional because they go physically from being volumetric to being flat. They're interesting subjects for me to look at. This is one of the inflatables that I used as a model for my dry point um, prints. And this is the one that uh, became the three-part really large print. I think I had it stretched kind of like that. I was taking some of my plastic inflatable forms and I was just flattening them with the piece of plexi and then essentially charting the, the tape joins as I saw them through the plexiglass and that's how I created these images. In dry point, there's so much really delicate detail in the plate, you know, from maybe where a line trails off. And I love all of those bits of detail. So if you have more pressure like this, then all of that picks up. Okay, here we go. This is where, over time, I feel like the narrative breaks down. It's sort of like you play around with the same ideas and it's like I'm now working on a 12th or 20th generation Xerox. But the Xerox isn't sort of falling out of focus, it's, it's like falling in towards some sort of inner focus. It's like I'm getting closer to some core, but the core itself is increasingly abstract. So it doesn't feel like a huge leap, but just kind of like a, a gathering. Scale is a really good thing for me to talk about in relation to my work. I like the pendulum swing from one extreme to the other. I love really intimate things that you can just hold in your hand, and I love the exhilaration of pushing an idea into a scale, especially in relation to some sort of architectural structure. I love, I love the way, I don't know if you can get close enough to see that, but the way the light comes through all of those joints there. This is sort of falling apart, this form, but the idea of the white on the outside and the black on the inside, this is what I'm building right now. This one is more built on strategy, you know, lining it black and having the exterior be white. There's all sorts of intention in the construction of this one, whereas this was really just a pairing of two kind of elements and it is just what it is. So, and it has a, a kind of a personality of its own because of that. I'm feeling so down on this one right now, I kind of just want to jump and make this one and then finish this one if I have to. To be, you know, really serious in contemporary art, you're like a factory, you're like a human factory with like 25 assistants, you know, in order to meet the challenges of scale. And I know that that's not really true, but you sort of recognize the way implicitly in a lot of situations scale is dictated. 
I'm thinking about that a lot these days and wondering the extent to which, left to my own devices, I have the urge to produce on a massive scale and the extent to which that's my response to the institutions that exist around making work. Of course I feel a little bit like you're required, in essence, to work on a certain scale in contemporary art. I think there's just some balance that we are trying to strike in our lives between having authority and having to be obedient to certain things in order to gain it, or to choose to turn away from authority in order to have a certain kind of freedom to not be beholden to these structures. I don't make the work with an audience in mind, except in the case of these big sculptural installations where you can't deny the, the audience being there. It just feels more like I'm being obedient to an existing system, and then it makes me skeptical of the honesty of the work. I, I get caught up in that kind of a cycle, and I don't know if that c concern of mine is even relevant, actually. Of course, we work in these contexts where we're bound by convention and history and what came before, and I'm trying to unhook myself from all of those frameworks and see where the motivation lies. How much was that already? Three minutes. Uh-huh. What a big funny thing. Uh, it is just as funny as I thought it might be. I, I mean, we didn't begin to fill it up all the way. Look at it inside. That's so cool. Um, so stick your camera in there. So it's 14 feet diameter. Isn't that awesome? I think my problem reflecting back on this show is that I always feel so finished with things once they're up. It's almost like the processing happens in the moment that it resolves itself, and then I just feel like I careen forward. You have to be willing to destroy everything in order to move. And in that process, it pushed me closer towards a kind of description that I would say has been consistent through my work for years. But I feel like if I can articulate that, then I can start to approach the work again and maybe find a balance between descriptions that have to do with the nuts and bolts of process, material, how things are made, but then the, the overarching qualities that a piece has because those decisions collide with this other sort of philosophical feeling. In the moment of risk taking, you have to confront all those larger ideas, basically, in order for it to be a successful leap. I'd like to do maybe one more piece that has like an inhalation, exhalation, non-static quality to it, but I think it would take on a really different form. When I walk upstairs, I still feel like a happy surprise. That it never rests is both very natural and sort of a source of agitation. And I think that's a, a really nice pairing. It has such a funny, kind of subconscious quality to it, that it really makes me ask not where am I going with this work, but what is the origin? I feel a sense of satisfaction about the Great Hall. The quality of the light as it hit the bottom, such that it almost feels like the form is phosphorescent or emanating its own glow, that was something I could have never have predicted if the process is loose enough and if you allow the material to sort of behave as it wants to, to a certain extent, I think these installations tend to have a kind of life of their own. I 
I guess I'm just in a mode right now where I'm really questioning all of that and wondering who am I without these structures? And would I even be an artist? What would I be doing?